Hey everybody, Mark Raycroft here and Michael Morrow. We're out filming moose this morning. We had three big bull moose. I've been doing still photos and this morning we're going to get a tutorial from videographer extraordinaire Michael Morrow on the changing of settings from still photography to video. So I'm using a D850 on a 2 to 500 and when I'm shooting stills I'm running and gunning it without a tripod because the image stabilizer or the vibration reduction is awesome in this camera and lens and can handle fairly low shutter speed. I'm shooting at 800 ISO, was at 1000 a little while ago, minus one third. I was at f5.6 but when opportunity presented itself went up to 6.3.7.1 because some of these bull moose, big antlers, want that depth of field to get all of the antler in focus whenever possible. So when anchoring this to this video tripod, I'm going to switch the VR off. I'm going to go from sport to normal mode. I'm going to go change from aperture priority, which is my preference when shooting stills, to manual. I'm going to anchor it on the tripod. And then level it up. And level it up. This is where Michael Morrow is going to take over the coaching from behind his Sony mirrorless camera on his Ronin S. Now maybe first, Mike, you can go over these settings on the back and on these tripods and what they are. So we've got zero through three. Yeah, so that's your drag. So it depends. What The most important thing is you want to balance, balance the camera. So if it's really loose, yeah, you just gotta find that spot because what you're trying to do is remove any vibration on the footage. If there's vibration, it's just hard to watch. And a lot of times if your hand's touching the tripod, it's gonna vibrate. So if your camera's balanced, that means you can remove your hand and your camera's gonna stay where you want it. So that is really important, just to kind of figure that out. What, what the drag level is, what where it'll stay put. So zero, Right. Zero is like free Super wheel. loose. One. It's still smooth and lighter. Two. A little more tension. And three. The most. Three. And those are all set up just for weights of cameras and then personal preference. Yes. The heavier the camera, the higher the number you want. And then it's your style. You know, what's your style for doing a panning shot or whatever? And you just got to figure out what you like. And something about this terrain too is you really want to be careful about where you anchor. The vegetation up here, we've got flat spots with exposed lichen and hard substrate surface and then we have these willows which are all over the place. So the best, you want to really anchor it in there to minimize bounce and of course once you start f filming, you know, minimal contact with the camera with your hands. So as far as settings then, let's get that dialed in on the camera. So we've switched from aperture priority to manual. Right. Am I going to, and... And then you can see, so here's the deal. We're in the shade right now, and your settings are going to be awesome without neutral density. Right. But as soon as that sun pops, it's a whole different ball game. And you can see over your shoulder up there, the sun's it's, coming. It is, yeah. So we want to shoot as much as we can now because this your camera's optimized for this right now. But even right now, I would suspect, my guess would be you could shoot 100 ISO at 5.6. Okay. And what you're trying to get is you're that. shooting... Let's see, 24p I think is what we decided we were going to shoot. So there we are, maximum sensor size of 4k at 24p. Yep. So, and we've talked about it on the podcast so many okay. times. Okay. Your perfect setting is, if you're shooting 24p, your shutter speed should be 48. And you don't have 48, right. 50 is the closest, closest, or even a 60th would be fine. But, and in the shadows, I don't even know if you're going to be able to get that. Can you do 5, 6, 100 ISO at okay, a 60th? Turn, turn it to video mode, turning on the live view on the back. Right. Yeah, exposure looks good. Yep. Touch to focus because we've got the touch screen. And to adjust it. Now, do you prefer to adjust the aperture or the f-stop or the shutter speed or the ISO to compensate for exposure as we shoot and so light changes? It's always going to be my aperture and my ISO because you want a 50th to stay there. When you're shooting video, you're not trying to stop the action. 
the 50th is going to give you that nice buttery uh, cinema look and that's what everybody's after right so mm -hmm. that's why you're shooting 24p doubling that to get your shutter speed so that's always a constant then oh. your only adjustments that you can make are ISO and okay. f-stop right what we were talking about is as soon as the sun hits at that point we're either done shooting video right or we slap on neutral density filters right and we had a discussion about neutral density filters earlier but we should talk about that a little bit your camera i think that end element on that camera is 95 mm -hmm. or bigger or bigger i'm not even sure mm -hmm. i don't even know if they make one i'm sure they do i'm sure there's a neutral density for that the other thing you could do is you could use a slip-on filter like a, almost a matte box style filter for that but it's tough my my solution would be switch back to stills <laughs> right because, and i've done that you know, on this trip if yeah you don't right. have neutral density there's no sense in shooting more video mm -hmm. so we've been getting out really early that's awesome because you could get out take advantage of this low light or cloudy situations too right a lot of times we're out shooting in clouds and you can maintain those settings for all you know throughout the morning absolutely but that's the important thing is you know if anything in a dark setting you want to raise the iso and your your aperture is personal preference that's all style are you the guy that sure. likes to have a lot of stuff in focus or are you the guy that really likes to separate the animal from the background so right well yeah playing with the f-stop certainly helps that way right but yeah we with this setup right now without neutral density option then we want to switch to sills if the sun comes and becomes borderline harsh but that so that's easy to adjust so we want to keep it at a 50th and by adjusting one of those two options so how high would you go on iso shooting video on a dslr like an 850 would you cap it at 800 iso or would you no, be i take it all the way to 32. you would eh? on okay. canon and i'm sure nikon's the same the thing is is video is so much more forgiving you're not it's it's a bunch of shots put together so you're not over analyzing one still image and looking for grain and looking for all that stuff it passes a lot of times and, and if you're in that situation there's probably something really good because if you need 3200 you're almost shooting in the dark mm -hmm. and the only reason to shoot in the dark is you saw a wolf attack a caribou which was riding a moose oh well, i'm shooting the in the moonlight for that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right. Or a wolverine pops out, you know, last minute light. I'm keeping my eye on these slopes because there are wolverines around here. Exactly. But that's the You're gonna We're going to have to keep up if that happens. <laughs> we're going. <laughs> that's good to know that it is forgiving and you can go up in the ISO that high and it'd be fine. There's something else about the camera settings too, that we're at 24p, but you could shoot at 60p. So if you shot at 60p, your shot should be 125. And that's cool because then you, now you got a little bit more... Mm -hmm. to, you know if it gets brighter that's a that's a compensator right? yes right. so on the red cameras that i shoot if i'm out if i get caught out somewhere without a neutral density i'll do 120 and when i go to 120 frames a second what happens is you lose a couple stops of light right so it's a compensator right so i could get away with shooting a little bit longer hack yep michael hack. morrow hack but there you go it, today is a blue sky day by 10 o'clock i'm done if i don't have neutral density i'm done mm -hmm. and even if i have neutral density i'm probably done something else with these big telephoto zooms have you noticed anything whether you're at 200 or all the way to 500 the christmas of the video probably is just as good as with stills it doesn't impact that for the right. zoom no it's all the same okay and whatever you're seeing in your stills is what you're going to get and, you know the quality of the lens that's mm -hmm. a good lens so I'm sure you're gonna be fine. Throughout. No worries. But it's something that you do want in video. So if we get into that a little bit, storytelling is so important, right? So you may start out with what you're really good at or what you really like, and maybe you know, for a lot of us, it's a really tight shot of big heads and antlers and. It's often where it starts. Yeah, but you need to then follow through and tell the rest of the story. It's cool to show the environment. It's cool to show what they're eating. It might be cool to show just the feet walking through the vegetation all that stuff you need to make sure you get shot mm -hmm. to make it all work to make that video come together yeah so with these bulls here it's kind of cool you'll be able to tell a little story that there's three bulls and you might have to pull out to 200 to do that you can't shoot too much when you're putting videos together well that's it right you can't repeat it we're out here today the light would be different another day 
or you just wouldn't be around the animals Every, or you're flowing away you're back home and do everything you can to create to create footage for storytelling this way once you got your settings once you got your tripod figured out we're ready once you started getting some shots the the easy picking stuff then like you said you start working on the other elements and then it's just all about your style what is your style do you like long dramatic you know 30 second clips or do you want to put something that's fast and c cut paste and then you only need two or three second clips and all of it you know i really feel like the today's generation grew up in the mtv world where it turned into really fast cuts so everybody watches fast cuts now so you might be able to set yourself apart by doing some really long 30 second clips and putting all that together the problem is you better have your your stuff together shooting because that 30 seconds has got to be good yeah that's the longer it is the more challenging it is and definitely the trend for years has been a punchy video with lots of cuts lots of clips and it's a lot more editing work whereas lately and it get it depends on on the audience too uh we some very successful youtubers we know how are extending their clips now people are just enjoying that slower presentation so it depends on the audience and, and your style as michael's pointed out but both are are doable and short clips you know if you don't get a 10 or 20 or 30 seconds continuous clip that's great it's steady the behavior is what you want the composition is what you want you can always shoot those 30 seconds and then pull out the five that you like the best it's whatever you want it to be nowadays and it seems like both of those styles are successful and trending yep and if you're gonna you know your instagram audience your family and friends are going to tell you what they like mm -hmm. you know they're going to pick up on your style they're going to tell you whether you when i play a video for someone i automatically know whether it was good or not if they look away during any part of that video i know i failed <laughs> yeah not to labor that but you know you think about it we're always fond most fond of our work because we have that memory tied to that day that experience right. right it's special to us that moment in time it's great to be in moose country it's official kickoff of the season antlers are pretty well growing <laughs> falls around the corner warm enough dusting off the cameras for moose so hopefully some of these settings will help you get dialed in on your dslr thanks to michael morrow's tutorial well we'll keep doing it we'll keep every time we're together we'll cover that stuff or sure well it's different different times and as things change and settings change too depending on the lighting well, and different lenses and yeah. different cameras and... yeah I can't wait for fall <laughs>